Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's episode, we're gonna be building this great little toolbox or tool chest that you see here that holds an entire workshop full of hand tools. For this project, I'm using these uh, already laminated boards that I got from the hardware store. So obviously the first step is to cut all these boards to length. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Although I've done the measurements, for now I'm just going to cut the sides out and we'll dovetail the box together and we'll take real measurements off the boards to find how big we need to make our bottom of this box and also the lid. So as you saw there, we've got the boards all squared up now, been on the shooting plane after they were sawn, and now we're ready to lay out the dovetails to make the main carcass of the box. So I'm not gonna go into a great load of detail in marking out the dovetails here. I've done that in previous videos, including my dovetail joint video, which I'll try and leave a card to up here somewhere. And I can mark the tails on both boards the same and, and saw through them together because we've got them level and at the same length. So what I'm going to start by doing is doing my half pins with the dividers. I'm marking here. Like this, make a little mark. Make a mark. Make a mark. Come back to that other half pin mark. Make a mark. Make a mark. Make a mark. So we can see just here that that's what we marked out, this mark here, but we're doing the dovetails on this. And we'll mark the dovetails on. I have a wheel marking gauge here. And the easiest way to get the depth of the board is to operate off the board you've got. I've got a little scrap here and I'm just going to use that. And with these wheel marking gauges, it's as simple as coming up here, undoing the screws and letting that blade drop down to a nice flat surface below. So now that we've got the tails marked, it's time to cut the tails out by removing the pin material. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll bring you in so you can have a nice close look at this. So as I've shown you in previous videos, we come in here. The most important thing is making sure that we get the cut square across, because when we transfer, that's what actually matters, that we're actually square across both these boards. So we start at the front, nibble our way back across. Just a little bit of the line is left there. It's pretty much completely gone. And then we proceed to chop to the line. Sides are done and we're ready to chisel out the waste. So now we've got the tails cut and all cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and use my Stanley number 45. 
and I'm gonna put the groove in that's gonna house the bottom panel that's gonna go all the way around. I've set my Stanley number 45, or if you're using the plow plane, you've set it. I've sent the fence to the depth I need to get the groove where I want it, where I showed you before. I've set the depth stop to six millimeters because that's how deep I'm gonna be making these grooves. And now it's just a matter of plowing the groove from the bottom of each of these panels. So make sure you got your, your, them marked and you know which orientation they're in so you get them all on the inside of your boards and just go ahead and plow them. Now that the groove is put in the bottom of this box, I've put it in the orientation it's going to be once it's assembled. And what I'm going to do to ensure that I actually have the correct uh, edges or correct corners together when I actually mark the dovetails, is I'm going to come in and I'm going to put A and A so I'm matching them. B, B, C, C. D, D. Okay, so what I've done is I've looked down in the gaps here, ensured that everything is lined up with these base lines along the side of this board on the inside. I've come in with a chisel and ensured that I'm flat here so I know that everything is aligned and my groove will be aligned. Now what I do is just put some weight down and we do a series of transfers using the knife. Starting with slow passes and working up to some heavier passes until we have a nice deep groove in place. And we go ahead and mark all the base lines, which we will do on these three up here. That's fine. But this one is going to be a little different. As we're going to come in like this, we're going to remove the material in the line with that groove. I paired back this half tail to cover where the, the plow line goes here, the, the bottom groove. So I've just roughly brought that back and I'll probably need to adjust it once I can get the tail in there to fit. And the next process here is to keep presenting your tails up to the pins and just pair away back to those lines you originally put in there until you get a nice tight fit with the dovetails. So I've managed to get this together and we've got a gap here because this little half pin still needs a little more material off it. You can see a gap here, which means we just need to take that little bit off because you can see how proud it is at the top. So that's how much material needs to come off to get it to fit nice and snug. We've brought the joint together. It's all fitting nice and tight now. I've finished just dry fitting the main carcass together now that all the dovetails fit. And on the bottom here, I've made sure that this little groove that we ploughed in here for the base is all lined up. Since we aligned the bottoms and we put it together, it was supposed to line up and it did just that. So what we need to do is get the exact measurements of the bottom panel. I did measurements prior to starting, but I like to take actual measurements off the project wherever possible just to ensure that I get it correct. Now, 
my measurements went from the bottom of the groove to the bottom of the groove in both directions and that was what we were looking for however I need to now take a little bit off that measurement on the width to allow the panel to still stay within the groove and not shrink out of the groove but also not expand and try to break the case that's my scrub plane So, as you can see, I've finished working on the bottom here, recessed it back. I did a quick dry fit, or a quick fit in the box to ensure that it actually does fit, and it does. So, now we're going to move on to gluing the uh, toolbox up. So I've left the box to dry overnight and now I'm just going to remove the clamps then we'll get a hand plane and just clean up these dovetails So what I've done here is just clamped it in my vise. I know it's fairly large and quite heavy to hold, but as long as your vise is done up nice and tight, it shouldn't be a problem. I've got the blade completely retracted, and I'm just going to slowly advance it until I start taking a slight shaving like this. So now that the dovetail's all cleaned up, the last thing I'm going to do here with the hand plane prior to cutting and fitting the lid is I'm going to level this top out. Now, for the most part, these joints came up all even, but these glued up boards are not all 100% the same thickness. They're a little bit off in spots. So I've got a little high spot here. So what I'm going to do is just run around with a hand plane and try and level this out a little bit, just on this corner pretty much. Up my plane, and we're taking very fine shavings. Now I'm just going to have a look along here. So I cut the lid to size as I said I was going to off camera. And I've got it all fitted. Just did a few little adjustments with the hand plane to make sure it fitted perfectly. So when it comes to attaching this lid, um, you could use little uh, butt hinges like this. Uh, I'm not planning to recess them and put them in under the lid, so they'll be going flat on the side like this. So they'll still open to 90 degrees like this, as I'm hoping the lid will open to. But I've also got a piano hinge here. Yeah, it doesn't go the full length of the box, but I kind of like the little gap at either end. So I'm going to go ahead and use the piano hinge. Once that's attached, I've got a little, uh, a few Haspen staples that are going to sit in here evenly from both ends, and that's going to hold the box shut and could also be used to lock the box if required. 
I also have uh, just a little uh, stay latch here as well. So I'm going to be installing that afterwards. So now we've got all the hardware on the box. I'm gonna go ahead, put some fixings that I've made, a tray that I've done off camera. So just sit back and relax and I'm just gonna fit everything in there and then I'll talk through what I've done.
So first of all, up the top here, I've made these little toggles here, which twist to hold the handles in. Then I've just done a little basic holder at this side with a bit of a chamfer on it to hold the other end of the saw. So moving on, you can see that I've got this tray here, which is going to house some sharpening stones, a sharpening jig, a strop, some mark out and layout tools, pencils, squares, rulers, that sort of thing. And so these uh, dowels here are just for flexibility. So if you don't have a jointer plane or you don't want to take a jointer plane, I would add a couple of extra dowels in the side to hold the plane and variable length. So you could drill a few extra holes to house these dowels, depending on the length of planes you've got or the exact measurements of your jointer plane. If you want to put a number seven in there or a number six or your number six is a different brand and it's a slightly different length, it allows you to move and adjust for that. Then my tenon saw sits just in on the side here next to the dowels that hold that number four hand plane in place. And uh, I've had no problems with just a few dowels holding the plate of a tenon saw in the past. And then this space here stays open to allow the use of uh, me putting my box of brace bits in there, egg beater drill. Um, you can even get your electric drill in here. Um, anything, this space is open. So with this toolbox, I've sort of kept it quite open and flexible so that it can be adjusted depending on what tools you want to take, what jobs you're doing, or what situation you are currently in at the time. I've got a bit of dust and dirt in here, so I'm going to clean the box out, and then I'm going to come back and give it a few coats of one pound shellac. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I just wanted to, to do this project to show that it is possible to store an entire workshop worth of tools in a toolbox such as this. And it does make mean that it's that much more portable. So if you're working in a garage shop and the car still has to come in, you can move these tools off to the side. Although it is heavy, uh, if you had it on some casters, you could move it around with some ease on the ground. So there you have it, folks. That's how you build a storage box for your work tools. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you liked this kind of video, please let me know in the comments what you think about it, and what videos you'd like to see in the future, and I'll try to make it happen. I'd also encourage you to check out the description below for my Facebook and Instagram pages, and consider liking and subscribing to get my weekly videos, and get notifications of when my videos are released. Bye for now.